We got today's as well. From Hi everyone who's just jumped on the recording. We're just talking PDB, the Python debugger running in MicroPython. To cut a long story short, if you've got a build of MicroPython with set trace turned on and the Unix port in the dev variant has it on by default, but it can be compiled into any version you want, then with the, these PRs worth of standard libraries imported, you can simply run MicroPython dash M like to run the module PDB and say a Python file. I've just picked one of the C Python, uh, the MicroPython test scripts here. And we launch PDB and it just drops a set of PDB command line. So here we're looking, this is the Python file we're debugging. We're on line one, it's up here, try. Oh, yep, that's what, that's where we're at. So this is now starting to run this Python script through the debugger and it's stopped at line one, ready to do stuff. So from here, we can S for step. Okay, we're on import. We can continue to do that. Keep stepping through, stepping through one line at a time. And now down here at sites, 39. So this is it literally stepping through as it's starting to import the Python file, running it all line by line, stepping through, stepping through. And so like that, we can run our Python script one line at a time and see where it goes, where the code path follows. You can also set breakpoints. So if I wanted to set a breakpoint at say that function, we just do B for breakpoint, test one. There we go, we've got a breakpoint set at line 15. Oh yep, that's line 15, looks about right. So C for continue, we'll just run until it hits a breakpoint. And there we are, we're at line 15, the start of that function. So on, continue, we've just run a line and we can just keep running it breakpoint to breakpoint and step again. You can also inspect some things along the way. So if I wanted to P for print, we can print say the sites is a global variable. And there we go, we can print it out. You can also interact, which does drop you at the fake REPL I was talking about before. So here we can print regular, ooh, or I've just broken it. <laughs> Turns out it's fairly easy to break. Sometimes it doesn't quite behave itself and you get stuck and have to start again. Luckily with breakpoints, we can get back to where we were pretty quickly. Yeah, so it's still a bit flaky. You can get out of where it goes pretty easily. And the biggest catch right now is that, say we're in this function. Um, if I was in the function at the break point, so I've just stepped over a couple of the lines at the start of the function. One of the optimizations in MicroPython means that local variables aren't known by name. So they lose that or throw away that data to save space, RAM, speed. So that means I can't just print out a local variable it says it doesn't know about it, but there's workarounds at the moment. You can always promote them to a global variable or stick them in a dictionary. If you need, know you're going to want to inspect them and we can look at other ways to deal with that in future. But look, considering we first started looking at this, was it Thursday, <laughs> um, oh, Thursday night, does that feel like this has come a really long way, really fast. We've actually got a working line by line PDB debugging for the most part. Do you go and try and LL is supposed to show you the current code and that just breaks too, because it's looking for the inspect package, which we don't have. So there's a bunch of other packages. I'd still like to try and bring in some version of or patch around some of the big ones are things like inspect. And I'm hopeful I may be able to re-implement some of those bits that PDB users. There's also a bigger can of worms to be able to get this working in the, the IDE debugging environment in VS code and PyCharm and the like. And that is also going, looking like it's going to be very, very achievable. It, again, just needs a few more packages brought in. There's network um, execution packages, that, but there's still things that are in the standard library written in pure Python that appear to not use much in the way of new underlying features. So 
look, uh, watch this space, this this debugging that's been a sort of a fairly big missing feature for Mark Python for a long time is now looking really close and could hopefully will turn into quite a powerful feature to sort of aid some of the more advanced program patterns that people from other embedded languages and desktop languages will be used to. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much what I had to sort of, sh yeah, show any, any questions? Yeah, the advantage of it being a built in package is there's quite a few uh, guides documents out there of how to use PDB. So again, it's like the advantage of working from the standard library is you can, there's a lot of documentation that will largely be able to inherit for it. Cool. Um, with the locals thing, you should be able to um, like at least inspect the stack frame of the function and it'll basically print out all locals and then you could potentially just infer which is which. It would, would they sort of have like an integer key associated them against them or something or? Well, well, yes. I mean, they're just slots in the stack. They're just, it's just basically an array. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I did assume that would be the case. I haven't figured out how to get to that. I saw there's a, um, I don't know either. It might not be exposed currently, but, um, yeah, at the very least you'll be able to print that array out. And so it's just an array of all locals. Yeah. Um, look that, that will probably work pretty well as a starting point. So yeah, I know that the locals function, I think it's just a copy of globals. Well, if you're in the class body, it's different, but otherwise. Uh, sure. But yeah, look, I know there's a locals dictionary, like behind the scenes attached to the frame objects, which I tried to expose a bit. Well, and I needed it for some, like I've started working on the, uh, the higher level functionality to get this working in VS code is another package called debug pie, which is built on top of all of this but uses, yeah, a lot of the other packages I was talking about, but it was expecting to find the F locals and a few other features of the frame. But yeah, I'll have to chase down the array. That should be pretty easy to display somehow. For those that don't know, Damien, do you want to give a quick explanation of what the, the locals optimization is? Or, or it's similar to Python, C Python, just that the local names like AI and address are just never stored anywhere. Like, can I get any? Um, and the compiler just knows that, for example, AI is slot two in the locals array, and that whenever you reference AI, it loads from slot two. Whenever you store to AI, it stores to slot two. And that's about it. So it's very fast using local variables. That's, I mentioned this quite a long time ago about how to optimize things. If you, if you have a function, it's faster than it. Um, than if the same code was at the global scope of a module because it has to look up global variables in a dictionary, whereas a local a function, it's just indexing an array. So that's but C Python does this as well, but it also keeps around a, a dictionary which maps name to value, and we don't keep that dictionary around. Um, mm. I guess the compiler could generate that dictionary yeah i did think as a future optimization of debugging yeah it, it, theoretically it should be possible to add that as a compile time feature to be able to keep that for debugging purposes but yeah that certainly hasn't been on the short list of things to tackle mm. It might so be worth that, noting that if um, people want to learn more about the optimizations, Damien's got a good talk from PyCon in, what was that, 2018? Um, was a while ago. It was a while ago. It's in the chat window now. So running fast and efficient like Python. Um, pretty sure you covered that there. <clears throat> it's had uh, 50,000 views, Damien. It's quite good for a PyCon talk. Wow. Pretty small talk. You're internet famous. Um, 
All right. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm more excited about this the most, but this is really cool. Like people have been asking for debugging on, on a device for forever. So uh, I'm super excited with this. Yeah, so does this really good. So this is something I've sort of come across a few times trying to essentially convince other seasoned developers that Mark Python is a real platform and a lot of them just get turned off immediately um, with by not having debugging. As much as there are different ways of working that I think are sometimes equally efficient, there's yeah, plenty of times being able to break into that line by line. People who are used to using it won't even consider a platform that doesn't have it. So it might just make it, yeah, help broaden that audience a bit further. Yeah. Cool. Pretty cool. Um, thank you. And uh, thanks, Ollie and yeah, Andrew, for uh, hacking on that stuff. That was a fun, fun supposition. Um, Damien, I hear you got a release out. Yep, I'll, I can take um, from here. Good question, um, actually. Sorry, before you start, that is yep. a good question. Did you cover that, Andrew? I didn't. Uh, sorry, there's Martin's asked in the chat if you can use breakpoint in your code. I don't think we've tried that yet. I don't know about whether you can use it exactly like that, but there's also a I know I haven't feature. tested it. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of things like sys.breakpoint or sys.dunder breakpoint or something that I haven't added yet. But behind the scenes, like even in their documentation, they just say that is a shortcut to the functions mm -hmm. in BDB that enable it. So it is still using the PDB, BDB architecture. There's just some shortcuts added in the sys module to make it easy to use. So which architecture? So, exactly. BDB, BDB. So they're not there yet, but could be easily added once the rest of, once the rest of this is merged and easy to distribute or install somehow. Haven't really planned how to best document that and share that, but yeah, they, they should be fairly straightforward to add. Uh, the breakpoint function came along in uh, 3.7 uh, and lets you set like a, an import PDB, PDB, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, just allows you to put a breakpoint method wherever you want to break. Yeah, and it, yeah, it doesn't actually add any new functionality. It is literally just a shortcut, which is a handy shortcut. It's added for a reason. Presumably people were asking for it, but yeah, you can, a, a lot of the guides online about using PDB show like how you add it to your code, like in your code doing import PDB and PDB.xyz. And all of that, I believe should just work at the moment already as much as I haven't tested it so much. But yeah, there's lots of bits that don't quite work. Like there's built in functionality for disassembling, which haven't even started looking at in practice and yeah, a lot of the code display things don't work because of the lack of inspect. So there's bits of it that are still very much broken, but the core infrastructure is up and running. I think the, the well, one of the things to do is to work out how to, how to make set trace enabled, you know, on more builds potentially. So it's actually useful. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm not still on the fence about that. Like, obviously, it, it's a big performance hit, and I doubt you're ever really going to be able to change that because at the end of it, it's a way to be able to run a function after every single line the VM runs, which there's always going to be overheads there, even if you don't have it actively enabled. I'm not opposed to the idea of just having a debug build and a regular build, but look, I yeah, take true. the point. It's, we it's, could make two firmwares. But like, because CPython obviously only have one build and they, it's fast without it enabled. So I'm not sure how they do it, but they must have yeah. a or something. Or maybe maybe we just need two VMs, one debug and one non-debug and you just switch to the one that you want. Yeah, maybe there's a, you know, like one of the tight loops in there that includes that hook out. Um, if it's only a few lines to use one or a few lines, not much code duplication maybe it'd be fairly easy to include both that can switch between if set traces enabled. Yeah. 
you could you could have self-modifying code like yeah that's little, fine if you know ops that are inserted and they're ever written with a call if you yeah, just move the type vm loop into ram and then you can modify that as needed that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but I might be getting ahead of herself there. That's an optimization. It's yeah. just that's the reason it's not enabled by default is because it's very slow. Uh, even yeah, with without sys, without actually registering a function to call, it still really slows down the virtual machine a lot. Um, but yeah, it's possibly worth noting that behind the scenes, this is remarkably simple. Uh, the way it works, uh, the whole set trace thing I was mentioning. That's just a way for you in Python code to be able to tell the Python VM, here's my function, like my trace function, can you call it for me? And after every, basically every line of code that the VM runs, it just calls your function and says, I've just run this code. Do you want to do something? And in your function, you can say, well, oh, that's, that's file blah line 10. Yeah. I've got a break point there. Let's, let's break and do stuff or no, I don't care about that line. Just continue. And it's just all high level Python code. That's actually pretty simple, really. Once that, yeah, just that set trace just lets you call a function after every line of code is run in Python and do something or not as you see fit. And everything just sort of builds up from that. <laughs>